verse 16 of 1 John 4. Verse 16 of 1 John 4. Y'all going to pray? Uh, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God. And God in them. Look at body and tell him, hey, hey. it's all, all about love, love. and happiness. Uh-huh, tell somebody, he really went there, love and happiness. Uh-huh, tell one more person as you take your seat, come on with me now, love and happiness. Say it like they say it down south, happiness. Amen, all folk could use a little love and happiness. Amen, do I have any witnesses in here you could use a little love and happiness? Amen. We all want a little love and happiness. And that is not too much to ask. Somebody say, just a little bit of love and happiness. This is Valentine's Love Month, amen. Look at somebody and tell them, uh, happy Valentine's Day. Come on, I don't care how you feel about it, tell them happy Valentine's Day. People gonna be giving flowers and cards. Let me just help the bros. Go ahead, I'll see you tomorrow, a little later on, get something. So you won't be looking crazy. Your boy's trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. Get something, amen. And regardless of how you feel about it, real love has the power to evoke feelings of love and happiness based upon what's happening. We love love. We are designed to love. In the beginning, God said, it is not good for mankind to be alone. Tap somebody says, it's not good to be alone. It's not good to be alone. That's why we in here. He sets the lonely and he places them in families. We were created for relationship, created for partnership, created for community. From the beginning, it has been all about love. Somebody holler, it's all about love. But y'all, before there were these new school recording artists like Major singing, this is why I love you. Before there was Joe and before there was Maxwell, before there was Drake, before there was Queen B, before there was Mary J. Blige, before there was John Legend singing both of his love songs, that there was in 1972, one of the Sentinels of Soul, the Reverend Al Green, on his I'm Still in Love with You album, with his shirt off released the single, Love and Happiness. Y'all remember that one? Love and Happiness. Make you wanna do wrong. Make you wanna do right. Pa, 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 pa. I want you to stay saved. You done went back. You wasn't in church back then. You wasn't nuh -uh. That's how some of y'all kids got here today. Tell somebody, Al used to sing that thing, baby. Al would, Al would sing that thing, and it pierced the souls of generations. Because everybody can use a little love. Just give them a little bit more. Say, happy name. Our text of departure, the Apostle John, helps the single, the married, the single again, and the married again discover how we might get the love that we're supposed to have. Somebody holler, I'm supposed to have it. He writes to counter false teachings of those who deny the reality of the presence of Jesus Christ in the flesh. 
But old apostle John, having walked with Jesus in the flesh, he presents Jesus in 1 John as uh, the light, as love, and as life. Somebody holler, light, love, and life. And speaking of love, in verse 7, he says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. At the onset, he encourages the believers at New Faith Baptist Church International to love one another. Look at somebody and say, we got to love one another. Tell somebody else, we need to love one another for real, for real. We need to love one another. And because y'all are so smart and y'all know the Hebrew and the Greek, you know that the words that are here presented for love are agape and agapeo. They speak of affection and endearment, yes. But they also speak of benevolence in action. It speaks of charity. It speaks of unconquerable goodwill to love one another no matter what. It's real love, not just confessing love but pro and professing it, but really demonstrating love. Somebody say demonstrating. But he makes clear, number one, the first thing he makes clear, which is instructive for us, is that love, agape love, cannot be expressed without an intimate connection with the Lord thy God. We have to be tight with God. Somebody say tight with God. Why? Because in verse 7 it says uh, love comes from God. In other words, God is the source of love. Love comes from God. So if love comes from God, it makes sense when he says everyone who loves has been born of God. Somebody say, born of God. Those who love the agape way are born of God, who is the source of love. Let me just check at the 11 o'clock service. Do I have any born-again believers up in here, and you glad about it? Give him some praise. Come on, do I have anybody who has confessed Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior? Hallelujah, you've been born of the water and the spirit. You've been born from above. Somebody give God praise that you're glad that you're born again. Somebody holler, I've been born again. Jesus said you must be born again. Praise the Lord, you must be born again. And back in 1 John 4 and 7 again, it says, everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Somebody holler, know God. Everyone who loves knows God. Everyone who loves like God knows God. How many of you would answer yes if somebody asked you if you know God? Do I have any folk who know God? How about if they said, how do you know that you know God? How many of you would respond something like, oh, I know that I know that I know God because I know what God has done for me. Do I have any folk who know in their knower that if it had not been for God, if you know that he brought, you know you ain't always been sitting up in church on a Sunday morning. Somebody ought to give God some praise. Oh, I know that I know that I know. I didn't wake up until noon, but now I'm in. But here is how the apostle, if you turn over to 1 John chapter 2 and verse 3, this is how you know that you know that you know God. He says in 1 John 2, verse 3, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait up. Wait up. We know that we know him if we keep his commands. And one version says if we obey him. I know that I know him if I keep his commands. And what I like about God God is not like Pharisees and church people who try to make church and what God knows and wants us to know something all complicated. You get real highly religious folk try to make getting to God complicated so they can act like they're the only ones who can get there and you can't get there unless they tell you enter in. The devil is a lie. Jesus died so that I might enter in. So you just need to get out of the way so I can get in. How do you distill the commandments in a nutshell? He makes it simple. I like it in the King James, Matthew twenty-two thirty-five. 35. 
It said, then one of them old lawmakers came up tempting Jesus and said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus says, it's simple. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. He says, this is the first and great commandment. But the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. All the commandments hang on these two right here. Amen. You know him if you keep his commandments. You know him if you obey what it says. Let me ask you again. Do you really know him? If you really know him, give him praise for real. Come on, anybody at least trying to obey what he says, give him praise. Come on, give yourself some credit. Come on, anybody trying to walk in God, if you're here this morning, you ought to give yourself some credit because you know where you used to be. You ought to give him glory for where you are right here. So come on, come on. So when I say, God, oh, I love you. Oh, God, I love you. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. You know how we get caught up in this. Oh, Ibo Shatoro, I love you. I love you, God. It must translate into, oh, Lord, I obey you. Oh, God, I do what you say. God, I take your leading. God, I look at your word and I do it even though it don't make sense to me. I'm a, I love you. That's how much I love you. I mean, profession goes to obedience. Love and happiness is just a song or a pipe dream. Unless you got a real connection with God. Why? Because God is love. God's essence is love. His being is love. His isness is love. God could have said, instead of saying, I am, he could have just said, I love. <laughs> That's who I am. That's his essence. Somebody said, God is love. And if we remain in him and he remains in us and his love remains in us, then we love like God loves because he empowers us to love like he loves. He is the vine and we are the branches and we bear the fruit of love when we stay connected to him. But if I'm not connected to him, I will pervert the love because I'm not connected to the one who downloads the love and I'll love in a selfish manner. I can come to church and still be nasty as hell, but if I stay in in him, that download of love is going to come through me. Do I have anybody up in here who wants some real love up in here? Don't pimp me. Don't take from me. Don't do stuff to me. Don't trick me. Don't manipulate me, but love me. Look over at John 15. St. John 15. St. John, walk with me because y'all grown and we're talking about relationship for the next couple of weeks, so let's stay grown. Amen. John 15 verse 9 says, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. Talk, Jesus. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. When you do love God's way, it produces not only love and happiness, but it produces joy, which is what you get regardless of what's happening. So even if they ain't being loving to you, you can still have joy because they don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. And this joy you have, the folk can't take it away from you because they didn't give it to you in the first place. So even if they withdraw their stank love from you, you still have joy because you ain't unhappy because they ain't give. Oh, y'all need to give God some praise that you can have a joy party all by yourself yourself because God can make you complete. Oh, somebody from the back to the front ought to get revelation and quit crying over it and know that it's done. First John 4 and 8. Back to First John says, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Love begins, ends, and is forever in God. God is the essence. But the reason that we ought love God the way he commands us to love him is not because of what he has tangibly done for us in the past, what he's tangibly doing right now, what we expect God to do, but because of his sacrificial acts 
of love toward us. Don't tell me you love me if you can't demonstrate that you love me. Don't tell me you love me if you're not willing to sacrifice for me sometime. Good God, love is positive action. Love, God is love, so he acts in love. Look at verse 9. It says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved him, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice. He sent his son that we might live through him. Not just have the abundant life of stuff, but to pass from death to life. See, when we think about what God has done for us and has brought us a mighty long way, we think about when we had nothing and now what we have right now. I know many of us came from the project, some of us came from the hood, some of us came from the country, and now you live in Country Club Hills. God has brought you from a mighty long way. You came from living in Big Mama's basement, now to having a three-bedroom house for yourself. You've come a long way. But see, you would really give God glory if you understood it's not just location and station in life that God has brought you. You and I have been brought from some places that if we really got the revelation you wouldn't need a praise team you wouldn't need a preacher you wouldn't need a church you would just be going down the road and think about what God, you just have to pull over and get get out and just give God a dance on the side I'm gonna come up let me show you how far God has brought you turn over to Ephesians 2 come on will you walk with me for a while Ephesians 2 Ephesians 2 verse 1 huh. this is how he loved me Ephesians 2 verse 1 says as for you, Trinell, you were dead in your transgressions and your sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and its thoughts. Like the rest of the Methodists, the Presbyterians, and the church people, we were by nature deserving of God blowing us off the face of the earth. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, not giving me what I deserve but what I need, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms. In oh, somebody ought to give God praise. Because if you like me, you was dead in some mess. But God... In his grace and his mercy lifted us up from the places where we are and it does not yet appear where oh, somebody ought to give God glory that you're not what you did but you are who he says that you are oh God check it check it check it first John 4 and 10 back there it says this is love not that we love God and yes we love God but even our love of God is not the greatest manifestation of love, but it is that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. God is, God is love. Somebody say God is love, but he's also justice. The wages of sin is death. And what I love about God is I did it, I do it, but he won't even let me pay for it. He says, don't, uh-uh, I'm going to pick up your sin tab. He says, as a matter of fact, I picked it up even before you did it. 
Before the foundations of the world, I made arrangements through the blood of my son to wipe your slate clean. Your money ain't good here. Because no matter what you did, I already paid for it. Uh, 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 God said, that's why you don't need to be guilt-written and be condemned. And you ought to be the first one to give God praise. Because the one who's acting like they delivered ain't necessarily delivered. Because if you delivered by faith, you can give God a jig. I don't care what you just got out of. I need some folk who did some stuff that if it was on the screen, ain't no way you'd be in church. I need some folk who can remember what they did when you was getting up and didn't even know who you were. I need some folk who, oh, God ought to give God some glory up in here. God demonstrated his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for, uh uh-oh, somebody give God some praise. See, that's how you love him. You give him praise. That's how you love him. You tell him, I love you. That's how you glorify him. You put his word in your heart. That's how you love him. You walk his word out. Uh, uh, Tell your name, I want some love. I'm going to hurry up because y'all got to roll. Second thing you need to understand is in order to receive, I ain't going through life without getting the love that's due me. (laughs) Too sweet to folk, you too nice to folk, you give to folk, you come to church at least early of the Sunday, you walk in with God, you you, you supposed to have some love. Tell your neighbor you supposed to have it. Why I keep saying that? Because in order to get your love and happiness, you got to believe that you're worthy of it. I'm walking with you slow because I want you to get it and quit getting with dum-dums. Hear me, hear me. See, we already said that in order to love God, we must keep his commands. but, But the love of God must translate into our love of other folk. Look at verse 11, 1 John 4. Dear friends, since God has loved us the way God has loved us, we also ought to love one another. In light of what God has done for us and the way he shows that he loves us over and over again, we really ought to love one another. But remember, God makes it simple. Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Then he puts another on it. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Look at somebody say, I got to love you like I love me. (laughs) 